Hi folks, Mayor Kevin Davis. I'm outside at the Civic Center with Sonny Smith. Sonny is the manager of arena operations for the city of Brantford. So, Sonny, you've been involved in the negotiations with the Bulldogs right from the very beginning of November, is that right? That's correct. All right. And you've been involved because we need a lot of information about the Civic Center what and what needs to be done and what could be done at the Civic Center. Yes. All right. Yeah. And with an OHL team, can the Civic Center be used as it is? No, there's a lot of things that the Civic Center sh falls short on to meet the requirements of an OHL facility, um, such as the lighting, the, okay. the glass, and the, it needs to be acrylic. Um, right, so Sonny, we'll let's go inside the building now and we can talk about all the things that we've done inside the building to bring it up to OHL standards. So Sonny, we're up here in the attic, the gondola. Uh, let's talk about the things that have to be done that we can see from here. Let's start with the scoreboard, <laughs> pretty basic. What do you have to do with a scoreboard for an OHL game? So, yeah, you're right. It's a basic scoreboard. It's, it's pretty much used up its useful life. Um, OHL is looking for modern technology, video replay, digital displays. It's like a jumbotron. It's like a jumbotron. But right. It's like a jumbo TV for the arena. Right. And that's an absolute requirement. Yes. Okay. We can see the benches. We're actually looking down on the benches across the ice. Any problem with the benches for an OHL team? Benches are not big enough for an OHL team, and they're too close together. They might even be on the wrong side of the ring, if depending where the broadcasting is coming from. Right, because you know you're going to have 13 to 14 players off the ice and a bunch of coaches, and they they can't fit in the area that's there right now. No, and they're not small players. They're they're one step away from the NHL. So. Yeah. And we're looking at, above us, speakers. Speaker system needs to be upgraded too for the, uh, the entertainment factor. Right. And sometimes I've been here in events, and when you have an announcer, you, so many times you can't even hear what the announcer is saying. No, because you're going to put 3,000 people in here. They make noise too. So we got to be over top of that. Right. And what about the lighting in here? Because most of the games are televised. Is that right? The lighting's not adequate. The OHL has a minimum standard. and. Uh, it definitely needs to be upgraded. It needs to be almost triple the light levels that we have now. Yeah. So it's one third as bright as it should be right now. That's right. There'll be air conditioning as well. So the HVAC, would be, it'll heat it for the game for the winter, but then we can add air conditioning for the shoulder seasons of the hockey, but also for the summer. So it can be used 12 months out of 12. Yeah. Right. And right now, a lot of the heating are those you see them hanging from the ceiling. I, I know I've been underneath them. If you're underneath one of the heating elements, you're warm. If you're not, you're not so warm. No, and the other thing is there, it's outdated technology. It's not efficient. It's electric radiant heating. We could, we could improve the, the atmosphere with a better system. Right. Sonny, we have tempered glass here at Civic Center. Can we continue to use tempered glass for an OHL game? No, absolutely not. The OHL is mandated a few years ago yeah. for player safety that it has to be acrylic. So acrylic meaning plastic, it has more give to it? Yes. Fewer head injuries, fewer other injuries. Exactly. So Sonny, we're in the men's washroom. There's almost not even enough room for you and I to stand in here. Very small. What is the plan for the men's, well, all the washrooms, public washrooms? The, the plan is to upgrade the size of all the washrooms and make it more modern and more room and accommodate more people. Right. Because if we have 3,000 people in this building, these washrooms aren't big enough. No. no. Sonny, part of the plan is to expand and upgrade the concession areas because, man, if there's 3,000 people in here, you know how long it takes you to get french fries and a hot dog? <laughs> It'll take a bit, but we're, <laughs> we're going to be expanding all the concessions here and, and having other options. What are the other options we're looking at? Well, we're looking at pop-ups on the uh, concourse level. Um, depending on what they want to do, uh, what we can do with space, um, we'll have uh, service stations in the arena bowl itself. One of the dressing rooms of the Civic Center. Uh, it's pretty small in here. doesn't even meet modern standards. What has to be done to the dressing rooms for the OHL? Well, you can see they're cozy, and we can't fix these spaces for the OHL, so they're going to build an addition outside at the, behind the auditorium. All right, and, and it needs more than just a dressing room. There's going to be a place for the trainer to go, the coach's corner, an exercise area where they warm up and they cool down, because uh, they are one step below the NHL. So, Sonny, this has some, you have some history on the Civic Center. You're not in your family? I do. My, uh, my grandfather was actually a member 
that contributed to the payroll deduction plan to, to fund the building, the original building of the Civic Center in 1967. That's right. So how do you feel being grandson of a contributor now working to upgrade and, and retrofit the Civic Center? I think it's kind of poetic. It's come full circle and I get to carry on the legacy. Absolutely.